It's time for the Moving the Chains podcast. Your home for high school football coverage in the Palmetto State. Every team, every game, every week. And now, your host, Kevin Thomas and Jarrell Hendricks. Welcome in to Moving the Change, brought to you by Founders Federal Credit Union. I'm Kevin Thomas alongside Drell Hendricks. We've got a great interview today, a very special guest, a new head coach of the Spring Valley Vikings, Nigel Pearson. Coach, how are you doing today? I'm doing good, man. Doing great. Well, we appreciate your time. We know you're busy. We appreciate you hopping on with us for a little bit. If this is you guys' first time tuning in, check us out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, et cetera, at Moving Change, our website, movingchange.com. That's M O V I N C H A I N S dot com, and our podcast on Apple, Spotify, Google, and more. Coach Pearson was hired in February. He's been the head coach at North Rowan in North Carolina for the past three seasons, going 20 and 12. Prior to that, he spent time at South Carolina State, Catawba College, and Fairfield Central. Coach, let's start there. How's that transition been getting down from North Carolina here into the Columbia area? Man, it was, it was a, uh... A, tr- a trying one at first, you know, got hired in February, but I didn't get down here full time until May 1st it was my first official day here. So it took that first week of kind of getting everything, um, get thing going. And then, uh, you know, lo and behold, my mom passed away May 2nd. So then that, that just threw another wrench in it. And so we kind of um, didn't push things back, but we still kind of got things going that next week. And right now I'm uh, transitioning my family down. Um, you know, trying to sell our house up there. So now we're trying to, you know, get a house, get a house down here. So hopefully we get, get settled here soon. Well, coach, we want to offer our condolences to you and your family. You hate, hate to hear that. So, but, uh, but moving to your, your background coach, if you don't mind telling the listeners and viewers a little bit about, you know, your playing career and your coaching career, you know, how you took the step to get to this point at spring Valley. Well, I started, um, I was originally from, from Darlington, um, Played at Dalton High School, and I attended Mayo High School for Math, Science, and Technology, which is a magnet school. And I played football at Dalton because that was kind of my home school. And then I went to uh, South Carolina State and uh, had a pretty good career there um, playing for Coach Pugh. Um, and then um, after that, I got uh, got my degree, and um, I ended up doing my student teaching at Orangeburg Wilkinson High School. And at the time, Reggie Kennedy was the head coach there. And so then Reggie Kennedy left and went to Fairfield Central. And then he offered me a job there once I graduated. So I was there um, with him for two years. And then uh, when Demetrius Davis got the job at Fairfield Central, I replaced Demetrius Davis at South Carolina State. Um, okay. So we, uh, we kind of switched kind of switched spots there. Um, then I was there from uh, for seven years, started off as tight ends and fullbacks. Um, then I transitioned to the offensive line and then eventually became the offensive coordinator there at South Carolina State. Um, then I moved on you know, to Catawba, um, where I was a run game coordinator there um, for three years under Curtis Walker um, at Catawba College. And then um decided to see we're going to temper- put some temporary roots down and um, yeah. took the head coaching job at North Rowan right in the middle of COVID. So uh, I got hired. I mean, I got hired as soon as everything got shut down. Um, I got hired. I did my interview um, on Zoom with the, with the host, with the staff there at North Rowan. I met my players for the first time on Zoom. I hopped in the car and rode around to meet them. Um, did that did that for a week. Did like six, seven houses a day, just going around meeting the kids. So that was a a crazy time to be a a, a new high school head coach. Um, in sure. The of so that's kind of uh, that's kind of been my arc in my career. So, Coach, you know, we mentioned you were able to get hired in February. Has that helped with kind of getting a, a staff put together? Because you kind of maybe had to, had to jump with some other guys. Or are you still waiting on a few spots? Or is, or is it all settled out for you now? I'm still waiting. I still need <laughs> to, if I can, I can. I really, you know, we can. I can use two more. 
Um, but I really, really need one more for sure. Um, and then maybe we can uh, we can make it work. But man, it's it is. I know a lot of coaches probably say this, man. It's hard to find coaches right now, mm -hmm. um, and teachers as well, just the way things are going. But uh, we're still looking. But I was able to um, retain some guys here, and then also bring in some guys uh, as well. I wasn't able to bring any of my staff from North Carolina with me. Um, those guys were kind of tied to North Carolina, so um, sure, be a good chance to bring those guys. So we kind of starting new here. I'm at Spring Valley. So, Coach, you know, you're starting brand new. Um, you have an offensive background. Are you going to, you know, call plays? I know you said you were a run game coordinator and offensive coordinator. Are you going to call plays on the offensive side? What are you looking to run? And then what are you hoping to implement on the defensive side of the ball? Well, on, on offense, um, a guy once told me, if you got a job doing something, why are you going to stop doing that? So I'm going to keep calling. <laughs> yeah, I <laughs> so, love it. Yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> so we yeah. gonna keep, I'm going to keep calling them. Um, I definitely will uh, have someone who will, you know, carry, be my offensive coordinator for some organizational purposes and that kind of thing. But I'll definitely uh, be calling the ball plays. We're um we're probably we're gonna base out eleven personnel and okay. we're gonna do uh we're still getting some spread stuff, but we're definitely being uh, mostly playing with uh with eleven personnel guys and um running some gap schemes, some inside zone and then um taking some deep shots is kind of what we want to do. And throwing a little quick game in there as well to kind of keep people honest. So that's what we do um offensively. Um defensively I was able to hire Kenyatta McCoy um, from a, he was a defensive he was a defensive back coach not a Bethune Cookman so that was a good that was a good get for us and we're going to be uh, multiple on defense um, we're going to bring some pressure fly around to the ball um, and able to play some uh, some man and some zone to kind of get after some people so that's how we're going to be uh, on both sides of the ball. So coach, you've been a lot of places you know played under some really big names like you know Coach Pew at, at SC State. Are there any guys in particular that really you think kind of shape the kind of coach that you are today? And maybe are there some guys, maybe even at the college and pro level, you'd like to watch now to pick up a couple tips from here and there? Oh, man, great question, man. Playing for um, playing for Coach Pew, um, the, the basis of how I like to run a program, a lot of that comes from him, my high school coach, Gerald Harrison. A lot of the program building stuff comes from those guys. Um, excellent O-wise. Um, being under that Buddy Pew system, um, the offense, Joe Blackwell ran the offense there, um, took a lot from him. And we did a lot of stuff studying um, what Gus Malzahn did out of uh, when he was at Auburn with the sniffer back and all that kind of stuff. So a, a lot of a lot of bases, what we do kind of comes from that family. Um, I'm not really a true uh, air raid guy at, at all, but I always enjoy watching uh, Cliff Kingsbury mm -hmm. on what he does. Big fan of Matt Canada, the Matt Canada under center um, motion oh, yeah. shift and stuff, and that's a lot of and uh, that's a lot of stuff that Sean McVay is doing as well. They're all kind of in that same uh, same vein. Um, it's funny that those NFL guys, man, you see so many stuff. Those guys look like some single wing, like wing T type yeah. stuff. That how yeah. it's funny how football so you know single cool, right? Everything's coming back around, and yeah. the NFL is kind of getting back into that kind of stuff too. So definitely um, Sean McVay, Cliff Kingsbury for the passing game. Um, Matt Canada on um, the run game stuff um, that he does definitely like to uh, like to watch watch that some of his old stuff when he was at uh, when he was at Pittsburgh mm -hmm. and then um you know got a chance I got a chance to play for Tony Elliott when he was at South Carolina State coaching the yeah. uh, he was at South Carolina State coaching the wide receivers and some of the stuff that he does when he was at Clemson came from that Gus Malzahn Chad Morris kind of style of family of stuff as well so that's kind of where my uh, where a lot of my stuff, um, offensively wise, come from, with a little with little tweaks in there as well, um, but that's kind of the base of what I like to, uh, what, what I like to watch and what I kind of like to like to study right now. Coach, let's talk a little bit about your team. You said you didn't get there till May first. Were you able to participate in spring ball at all? Yeah, we got twelve practices in in spring, okay. so that was enough to kind of get our base defense stuff in, our base offense terminology, um, being able to line up. Um, so that was good. But, um, you know, we've been able to get a lot more done here in the last uh, last three weeks during summer. And what were you able to kind of figure out about your team in that early period of, of spring ball and then going into the summer offseason stuff? Man, that spring ball period, it was just, you know, I'll be honest with you, it was them trying to get to know me and me trying to get to know them. Sure. So, so the hardest thing probably was trying to learn names. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that, was probably, that was probably the hardest thing, yeah. you know, just trying to, you know, uh, coming from uh, North Carolina, coming here, just a whole new set of kids. Um, trying to learn personalities, um, you know. So that was probably the most the, the most we got out of spring was just learning how to do 
um, the things how we want to get them done. And that's in terms of discipline, in terms of how we're going to clean the locker room, how we're going to be on the field. Uh, you know, so that was that was the main thing, getting the basis of the standards of our program. And then, you know, then we started getting into a lot of the X and O stuff. But just trying to find out, um, you know, I really wanted to find out who was going to bite, what kids were going to be physical, uh, what kids were going to be a little bit timid. Can we get those kids to maybe bite a little bit? So that's what I think I kind of got that out of the spring just to find out what we kind of have and what we're going, what we're going to be working with. So, Coach, the spring's over, like we mentioned. You're kind of into that seven-on-seven seven time period now. Are you a big proponent of that type of stuff? And have you guys been participating in many of those so far? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, we've, been, we've, been get, we've been getting together uh, with, the, with, the, uh, with the rules and the way we can do some things now. We've been getting together with some teams and doing some things together. I kind of like that better. Mm-hmm. I feel like you get more work when, if, you know, you can get with a team and kind of just do uh, – just work on your stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Cause a lot of times you get in a seven Oh seven style, the tournament style things, you kind of get more focused on um, winning the tournament or winning the game than it is working on your own stuff. So I think, I think, I think they have their place. I think the tournament style things have their place just in terms of camaraderie and competition and team building. I think that's great. Um, but then there's also a time for, just getting some work done, you know, getting together with your buddy who coaches the school and y'all can kind of spend as much time as you want. You can stop and coach it, correct it yeah. without having to worry about it being in a competition style of being in a, in a team atmosphere. So I think both of those, both of those things kind of have their place. This time of the year, the skill guys get all the love. You doing anything for the linemen, like any camps or anything like that? I know you're, you're a former OL and OL coach. So you got to show those guys some love, right? We don't take care of those guys. So <laughs> when we go, when we take, uh, whenever we go on those seven oh seven, we do deals. We always gonna take those old linemen so they can get some work with uh with some, and it's always good to go against some other guys. You know, because I it mean, it's, it just go. What I what I've learned is that the summer gets so monotonous of like sure. routine, 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 lift. You know, practice, lift, practice, lift, practice. So it's always good to get on a bus and go to another yeah. school and just to see a different color jersey. So whenever oh, yeah. we get a chance, we definitely put those old linemen on the bus and um and take those guys with us to get some work when we go different places as well. So coach, obviously you're still kind of getting to know your guys a little bit here and there, but who are some special players you maybe you've identified that we should be on the lookout for here in the next season? And our, our quarterback, Aiden um Jones, um, he's going to be he's a, a solid football player for us. He's going we're gonna be looking for him. He, we're gonna probably go as far as he takes us on offense. Um we got some great bunch of uh a D linemen that we feel real good about. Um, of Jonas, KJ, um, Caleb, and those guys uh, up front are real good for us. And then we got um, Diggy, Devin Crumpton in the secondary, um, who's going to be a solid football player for us as well, um, along with Will Smith, those guys in the secondary. Then David Alford, that linebacker, he's going to be um, he's going to be one of our leaders on defense in terms of getting those guys um, lined up as well. And then up front, um, we got Alan Hartwell returning for us. Um, we got Serge Stokes, who's returning. Um, got some playing time well, and we got Robert Griffin, Robert McGriff, and um, Joel Amos. So we really feel real good about um, those guys up front. Just got to get them to, um, you know, to get 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 real comfortable in what we're asking those guys to do, which may be a little bit different than what they've done before. So that's the challenge right now. Coach, it's a big transition. We did a little research, you know, looking at North Rowan. The enrollment numbers were kind of small for your Uh-oh, school there. Look at you doing some research. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got, got, got to be prepared. That's part of it. So you had, to, had a smaller enrollment there at that school, yeah. and then you go to Spring Valley, which is 5A, highest classification in South Carolina. What's been the biggest adjustment, you know, in the period of, you know, coaching there to coaching at Spring Valley? The, the biggest adjustment has been just um, the amount – we talk about the amount of kids – and managing the amount of kids in terms of varsity, JV, B team, um, having those kind of kids. But coming from um, spending some time in college, um, seeing how we were able to operate programs, I'm kind of a lot of trying to implement a lot of that, those things here to help it uh, to help it run a little bit better. Because you're talking about going from managing, you know, 50, 60 kids to now having, you know, 115 kids, 110 kids uh, in a program top to bottom, which we hope we get get that number up. Um, just to turn, I, I told my AD, I want to run a helmet. That's my goal. My goal is yeah. to not have enough helmets. And once we get there, I think we'll be, we'll be cooking with grease, but that has been, a, um, that has been a, a, an adjustment. And one of the good adjustments, one of the good things is that, um, coming from a place like North Rowan, it was difficult to get guys in like preferred classes. 
in terms of like weightless because there weren't a lot of things offered. But here in Spring Spring Valley, we're able to do certain things with our kids and our scheduling because there's so many different class offerings and um, and teachers that teach different subjects. So we're able to. That's been one of the positives about being in a place like that like here that you're able to do those kind of things um, to help kids. Because we all know that you got to, you know, your wife, your wife hate to hear this, but football's turned into a, a 12 month deal. You know, yeah. so you got to be able to kind of um, navigate those waters. So a place like Spring Valley, different from North Orleans, we're able to navigate that part of it a little bit easier in terms of uh, in terms of scheduling. So, Coach, how hands-on do you like to be with some of the younger programs? Do you, do, are, are you going to be the head coach of the JV in the freshman program, or do you kind of just oversee a little bit? Or how hands-on do you get with some of those younger guys? I'm with, uh, we, we right now we do we um, have our B team guys coming, and we do alternate offensive and defensive days, and I'm coaching the offense now on the B team. Mm-hmm. So, on the days that we do offense with the B team, so I'm going to be very involved on all levels. Our varsity staff is going to coach our JV guys. Um, right now, like we said, our varsity guys coach our B teams every other day, offense, defense, they flip. So we are very um, – those guys are our future. Yep. So we're going to put – we're going to invest just as much time in those guys to kind of get those guys ready to have some basis of football in terms when they get to uh, – when they get to JV and when, once they get to varsity. So now I'm very, um, very hands-on in terms of those, uh, those sub-varsity programs. So, Coach, you were at the collegiate level with South Carolina State and Catawba. You know, how did you know that you wanted to go back to the high school game, and how important was it to come back to South Carolina and coach here? And it was just, you know, and what I've what I've learned is the time the time is the same, pretty much, um, but it's just different times of the year, right? So, in college, I'm gone in January, two or three nights a week recruiting, right? Yeah. In January and December, and then in May doing spring recruiting, I'm going maybe four nights a week, right? But now in high school, um, the majority of our time, we do a lot of stuff during the summer, but I'm able to go home at night. So that was one of the main things that kind of made me um, want to get get back into the high school. This is where I started from. And I always told myself, I always tell people all the time, I'm a high school guy that happened to coach college football. Um, <laughs> I just, I love, I love high school sports. When I was recruiting a kid and he played another sport, I always went to games. Um, I just always enjoyed uh, what high school football did for kids. So that was one of the main things. And also for my family, have two little, two kids, um, and able to spend more time with them and be around them is, um, a lot as well. So that was one of the main reasons that kind of made me um, come back to the come back to the high school game. Just always admire those guys um, going and stopping in and talking ball. You know, we college guys think we knew everything, man, but I was always <laughs> take a, I can always take a notebook with me and stop and talk ball with guys. Um, Oh, Mark Barnes, we hear that something. We'd always sit and talk ball. Uh, Coach Hickman now, who's at who's in uh in Brunswick down in uh, North Carolina, he's at Anderson now, but we always talk ball. So um always have my coaches I like to have my last stop of the days with. I know those guys can yeah. want to sit around and talk some ball with. So that was a, I always kept my foot in it just to kind of, you know, get a good feel for if if the situation ever um brought itself up. But definitely come back to South Carolina. Um I tell them all the time, like the word was that Spring Valley hired that North Carolina guy. No, 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 no. <laughs> Valley, Spring Valley hired a South Carolina guy. I'm South Carolina through and through. And uh, recruited South Carolina my whole time. So I, I love the high school football here in South Carolina and wanted to get a chance to get back here and uh, raise my family in South Carolina and also coach some high school football here. I love it. I love it. Coach, you know, so you've been at the collegiate level, and, and Jerome and I talk about it a lot with some other coaches, it feels like kind of the, the transfer portal has kind of changed the way the high school recruiting happens a little bit these days as far as maybe when colleges get after guys and whatnot. And it, it seems to be a little bit harder for some of these high school guys to get looks. How important is it you having some of these relationships with some of these college guys to help get your guys in front of the right people to get them a chance at the next level? I think it's very important. Like I told, I told my parents, doing my parent meeting, and even doing my introduction, I, I, we, they have the cheat code, right, because I'm the guy who's been on both sides of it. Yeah. So been able to navigate, never navigate both sides of it. Now, I think the the worst thing that happened was the transfer portal hit the same time the COVID extension hit. Yeah, right? that extra year. Yeah. Oh man, so that was just like a one thing on top of the other. So you got kids in the transfer portal, and you had kids with extra years of eligibility. So it just wasn't a good time for both of those things to hit at the same time for uh for a high school kid. And I think what it hurts is like let's be honest, right? The top three hundred kids in the country. Everybody knows who those kids are, and they're all going to yeah. have homes, right? I think that's pretty 
but it's the next 600 kids, the next 400 kids that are, you know, that are Division II FCS tweener guys that get lost in the shuffle in terms of a transfer portal guys. Because now, and it comes to, now you're a head coach and you got pressure to win. Are you going to go take the 18 year old kid with no college experience? Or are you going to try to find a kid that can help you win right now to keep your job? So you got all that coming into play too, in terms of how, how colleges are recruiting and how they're trying to build and manage their roster. All the guys I talk about and all the guys I college coaches I talk to now, they talk about how tough it is to manage a roster because you don't know. It's almost like most, one of the guys said it was like coaching junior college football. You don't know who's going to end up being eligible for the yeah. old junior college yeah. day, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And that's what that's what um, college football is turning to right now. You know, you go through a fall with a, in a spring with a kid. You think he had a good fall, good spring. Then he comes to your office, you know, mid-May, like, hey, coach, I think I'm going to leave. Yeah, so now that puts you at risk because you didn't sign a kid to replace him because you thought you were going to have him, right? So now you got to go into the transfer portal to find the next kid yep. because that kid's leaving you without a position to fill. So those are the those are the kind of things that I think um, are hurting our are hurting our high school kids in general in general and also hurting college kids as well because of what what is it what's it doing right now is like you know once it gets a little hard I'm just gonna go to another school sure like it's not gonna be hard there <laughs> you know <Yeah. laughs> right so it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna be hard everywhere you go right but so um we just got to figure out figure out how to navigate it and um and find places for our kids that want to play college football. Coach, you mentioned having to dispel those rumors of being a North Carolina guy coming to Spring Valley, but you're following, you know, Coach Bacon, who was who was tenured there, you know, eight seasons plus offensive coordinator before that. You know, how has the community embraced you? How have you, you know, tried to fit in best and you know, build those relationships with the the players and the community? It's been good, man. I think the community has been very inviting. Um, you know, there's a lot of one of the, one of the great things about Spring Valley is kind of one of the one of the older schools in the Columbia area. So there's a big wide range of alumni um age. So you gotta gotta meet a whole lot of different kind of people. So I'm looking forward to getting in the community even more um in terms of you know the the rotaries and all that good stuff and meeting as many people as we can. So um Coach Bacon, you know, is, is, he did did a great job here. So I'm um looking forward to kind of continue on some of the stuff that was done here before. Take your financial game to the next level with Founders Federal Credit Union. Reach your full potential. Relax. Join Founders today. Visit an office near you or relaxjoinfounders.com to apply. Federally insured by NCUA. Member qualification required. Got a couple easier ones here for you, Coach, before we let you go. Uh, okay. you know, we, were, we were talking about getting this scheduled a couple weeks ago. You were mentioning going to work, coming to Boy State for the week. You know How, how special is that program and, and how much do you enjoy being able to get back and kind of help out with that uh, down there uh, every year? Oh man, that that is. Um, I've been doing that for twenty years, man. And what we do down there in terms of uh getting nine hundred to a thousand boys for a week and kind of teaching them some leadership, um, changing their lives. We kind of say let one week begin the rest of your lives in the in the, what we do with those kids in terms of that mock government. That's pretty special to me. That you know, I know that the summer is kind of big for what we do, but I take a week to go um uh, to go do that and trust my staff to be here with those guys. So um. That is that is um, some of my best friends have come from that program, um, who I work with. Um, so yeah, that's a that's been a big, real big part of my life for the last twenty years. So I really enjoy doing that, volunteering my time, and um and getting meet uh, some young men from all over the uh, all over the state. It was really big when I was coaching college football, because uh, I got to meet some some guys, <laughs> get meet some guys yeah. there who were also good students and yeah. some uh, good football players. Like Kelly Bryant was there one summer and. Um, shoot, we had a couple guys. What's the what's the uh, Bryce, get McGowan's, those guys came through. Yeah, there. yeah. Um, so then we always had Oliver Jones played uh played O line at Clemson. Mm-hmm. So every year we always have some guys um uh, that come through there. The quarterback from Ridgeview was there this year, so got a chance to <laughs> nice. him a little bit. And I had some of my players there as, um, as well. So getting to experience that with them and kind of share that with them was also great too. Thanks for asking about that, Kevin. Man. I appreciate yeah. that. Man. I, I went myself for my senior year, so I, I know it's a great program, man, for sure, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, same for me. O- 06, I think it was back really? in the day. So, yeah, yeah, both. Okay, both so in 2006, I was, I was a counselor then. Okay. In 2006. I, I, and when you go, when'd you go, Kevin? I would have been 08, 2008. 08. Yeah. So I think I was doing party stuff then. I may have been like a nationalist or federalist guy back then. Okay. But, yeah, I ran my whole gamut of things I've been doing down there, so uh, – it's, it's it's great time. I'm glad you guys are boy fed alums, man. Yeah, had, yeah. Had to get that had to get that question in there, there man. We go. There we go. <laughs> That's great. Yes. Man. That's great. 
one of the best weeks of my life. So, oh. Coach, I got to ask you. This is a staple for us. Um, it's it's about restaurants. So you've been you've Ooh. been in the Midlands long enough, and you recruited there. So I'm not going to give you a pass. I need some restaurants, you know, in the Midlands, some of your favorites, and I also need one back home in Darlington too. All right. So let me give you. I got to give you some background information. Okay. okay. I, so my parents that we've owned a, a a restaurant, a fish market in Darlington for the last like 30 years. Okay. okay. No, take that back. 37 years. Okay. We've had, we've had a restaurant. So um I'm kind of a snob in terms of restaurants now. <laughs> so I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna kind of give you, I'm a I'm a preface with that. Okay. Um now I'm taking notes. In in Colombia, um, since I've been back, I was always a big fan of Blue Marlin. Okay. Yeah. Downtown Columbia in the Vista. Um, I proposed to my wife um, at, at the cupcake shop right across the street from Blue Marlin. Cool. So that was always um, a staple for me. Hudson's Barbecue, when it was there, there was the one that was over there off of um, Bower Park where that burned down, but the one in Lexington, which is a little bit, you know, uh, out a little bit, but that's always been a, um, been a good deal. Then Little Pigs. Little Pigs oh, yeah. here is always, Little Pigs here is always a, um, a nice go to um, buffet style. And that's what I missed when I was in North Carolina, man. They didn't have, you know, I'm a big dude, man. I like a little buffet. They didn't have no <laughs> the bar- the barbecue buffet did not exist in North Carolina for some reason. It was kind of crazy. It's um, a shame. So that was always um kind of my uh, go tos um here when I'm being in uh being a club. I'm trying to see where else. Um, Blue Marlin. Oh, I, me wife, we love to hit the Rio's Brazilian Steakhouse. I know that's kind of a oh, shame. Yeah. Um, but it's kind of you know always like to like to uh, hit that as well. Um, but that's kind of kind of been my Columbia deals. Now talking about Darlington, I got to be partial to Bay Island Seafood in Darlington. Okay, um, that's my parents' restaurant. Um, you know, get you some get you some fried croakers, some fried spots, some whiting, Come little coles, all little hush puppy, little French fries, and <laughs> we'll, uh, hey, talk we'll, to me. <laughs> <laughs> talk to me. That's that's right. I'm, I'm in it. That's all you right now. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Going there now, now, I when I were, when I was coaching at Catawba in South Carolina State, I got a chance. To, well, at Catawba, I recruited basically from like Wilmington all the way down to Hilton Head. So I had like all yeah. I, all of the I ninety five, all the twenty yeah. from Florence. Um, so I always plan my recruiting day about where I was going to eat lunch and dinner. <laughs> Love that. <laughs> Love that. <laughs> Smart man. Smart yeah, man. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So like when I was recruiting Charleston. My last stop was always James Island, and I would do roadside <laughs> seafood over there. Okay, you know, and, um, and then in uh, you know, my next day I was always in in Wando, and it was a hot dog spot I would get out there, uh, um, Atomic Dogs or something like that out there. Okay, and then okay. um, so the, and then you had Pages Oak Grill out there too. Yep. Oh yeah, and, Pages and Solid. And, and the wreck, I would hit the wreck. I would alternate yep. those out there. So um, that was always my deals, man. I always. I always like a good hot. I'm a good. I like a good hot dog. Okay. So we okay. got Jimmy's. We got Jimmy's Mart right here down the street from Spring Valley, and everybody told me that's okay. been a good hot dog. Um, so I, I enjoy mm-hmm. that. But I always always had to find me a good hot dog on the road and some good uh some good seafood or a good steak while I was on the road recruiting. So, um, Chuck's down in Myrtle Beach was always a spot for me. Chuck's. Okay. I would hit Chuck's and get me a steak. Um, shoot, yeah, man. You you talking my you talking my language now, man. I'm a I'm a fool. I'm, I'm kind of kind of a snob, man. I love it. I'm over here taking detailed notes. Yeah, I, yeah. Bit, where, where, where I, but from, I, I will. Where you from, Jarrell? Where you from? I'm from Greenville originally, but okay. I like to travel all around the state. So, and I I got family in Columbia, so I've hit Blue Marlin, Little Pigs, Rios. I, I've oh, I've hit yeah. those. So I I gotta I, I can check those off. Where you from, Kevin? I'm from uh, Marion, South Carolina. Ooh, yeah, okay. yeah. So I, I was gonna ask you. I know you mentioned uh, you, you mentioned some barbecue spots. Maybe what's some of your favorites here around the state? I mean, I, I tell Ooh. you what, Drill knows I got two of mine that are very very near and dear to me. So I'm hoping you listen, right. but I want to hear what I you know, say. I know. I think. I think I know one that you're gonna say. Okay. Um, what's my spot off of, off of, um off of the highway and ladder? Schuler's. Right Schuler's. That's I knew, it. <laughs> I knew you were going to Schuler's. Love it. Schuler's. I, I knew you were going Schuler's. Schuler's buffet, right? Yep. Oh they yes. Got the buffet. They got the buffet. Okay. <laughs> and the fried chicken is good as the barbecue. Schuler's. All right. Now, okay. Schuler's, but let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Barbecue buffets. Like, okay. We'll do, that. we'll do barbecue buffets. Okay. In South Carolina, that I've been. Okay. Now, Rogers Barbecue in Florence. 
Okay. You got, you got Rogers Barbecue in Florence, and you got also got um, Woodside Barbecue in Florence. Both good barbecue buffets. We already talked about Little Pigs. Now you got to go Dukes in Orangeburg. Yep. Okay. yep. The one, the one on Whitman Street. Okay. There's two different ones, but the one on Whitman Street is the one. Um, Shooters. We talked hit Shooters already. I'm trying to see. Then, then we talked about um. What I say earlier, my spot that used to be in on Harbison, uh, uh, Hudson's, Hudson's. Yep. Talked about Hudson. So all those, I like a, I like a nice solid barbecue buffet. Okay. Um, got, gotta have good, gotta have good size. Yep. All right. You can't, yep. you can't just, you know, you major in the barbecue, which is great, but you gotta have some good size. And every now and then, when they drop a little dab of seafood on the buffet too, oh, yeah. gotta make it, gotta um, gotta make it go too. Um. I like that. Ooh, 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 no, in in Hartsville, you got uh what's my spot in Hartsville? Right there by the, the railroad track. I'll think of them in a minute. But it's a good one. It's a good one too in Hartsville. Oh, I can't okay. think of right now. But that's a good one um as well. So yeah, barbecue buffets, I'm in. Sign me up. It. I love it. I love it. <laughs> All right, Coach. Well, finally, we got to ask you, we're going to circle this thing back in and close it up. What are some of your goals for the 20, 2023 season? Man, I just, I just want to I want to be able to be competitive, and whatever that whatever that looks like for us, being being competitive in in, in our football games, um, and not being no, knowing that on what's coming out of those games, if we're successful, you know what we did to be successful, and if we were not successful, knowing what we need to do to get over the hump, right? So being right there, um, you know, yes, we want to win games. I think everybody knows that, but just being able to understand. What what we did to win the games that we did win, and the games that we were competitive in that we may have came up short. What do we need to do different next time moving forward to make sure that we can still competitive and even win those games um in the future? So that's my goal from this year, and just kind of get a chance to build. I know, and I, the buzzword is culture, culture, culture. Everybody want to talk about culture, right? Yeah. But just want to be able to build a program to what we wanted to look like here. I'm um, at Spring Valley and the staff that we have here what we want our young men to be like on and off the field. So those are my, uh, those are my goals for the year. Well, this has been great. Definitely all our followers go check out coach Pearson and the Vikings program on Twitter and Facebook. They do a great job posting highlights and updates. And that's definitely check them out on social media. Like I mentioned, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, et cetera, at moving change, moving change.com podcast on Apple, Spotify, Google, and more moving the change brought to you by founders, federal credit union. Do you anything else for coach Pearson before we let him go today? Uh, Westwood that's barbecue. That's it. Westwood in Hartsville. That's it. <laughs> Put it on the list got, right now. I got it. Got, we got <laughs> Westwood. There Westwood. Westwood barbecue. Yes. 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 Got well, it. for me, Coach, I just want to say congratulations. Um, you know, on the opportunity for you there at Spring Valley. Welcome back home. You know, to South Carolina for you and your family. That is that is outstanding. Looking forward to what you can do for that Viking program going forward. Uh, just wish you continued success. You've been successful everywhere you've been, and I'm. You know, there's no reason why you shouldn't keep doing that. And it was great talking about two of my favorite things in the world with you, food and football. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love that's, that's it. Great, man. That was great. I'm a, I'm excited, man. You guys, you guys, you guys travel to games, right? We do. We yeah. do. So we, uh, we hope to make it down there for one to get to meet you in person, uh, this oh, year. It'd be a, it'd be a lot of fun for sure. Uh, Come on. But yeah, coach, we appreciate it. So we know your business. We appreciate, appreciate you hopping on with us. Look forward to seeing you soon and, uh, best of luck. All right. Appreciate it, man. Thank you guys. Thanks coach.